The Dmitry Donskoy holds a unique place in naval history. This submarine is not just a marvel of engineering but also a symbol of an era marked by intense geopolitical tensions and technological advancements. It is the largest submarine ever built, a true giant of the seas. This behemoth of the deep stretches longer than two football fields, making it an awe-inspiring sight to behold. It weighs in at an incredible 48,000 tons when submerged, a weight that is almost unimaginable for a vessel that operates beneath the ocean's surface. To put that in perspective, that's heavier than a World War II aircraft carrier. The sheer mass of the Dmitry Donskoy is a testament to the engineering prowess that went into its construction. But the Dmitry Donskoy wasn't built for size alone. Its design was a complex interplay of form and function, aimed at achieving strategic superiority, it was designed to carry the deadliest weapons of the Cold War, nuclear-armed ballistic missiles. These missiles were capable of striking targets thousands of miles away, making the submarine a formidable deterrent. The Dmitry Donskoy belongs to the Typhoon class of submarines, a class that represented the pinnacle of Soviet engineering. These submarines were the pinnacle of Soviet engineering, designed to operate in the harshest conditions and to deliver their payloads with precision. They were designed to be virtually indestructible, with reinforced hulls that could withstand the immense pressures of deep-sea operations and the shockwaves of nearby explosions. Their mission was to survive a nuclear attack and retaliate with devastating force. This capability made them a cornerstone of the Soviet Union's nuclear strategy. This made them a key part of the Soviet Union's nuclear deterrent strategy, ensuring that any attack on the Soviet Union would be met with overwhelming retaliation. This submarine was a symbol of Soviet military might, a floating fortress that showcased the technological and military capabilities of the Soviet Union. It instilled both fear and awe in equal measure, a reminder of the ever-present threat of nuclear war during the Cold War era. The Dmitry Donskoy, named after a famous Russian prince, served as a potent reminder of the stakes during the Cold War. Prince Dmitry Donskoy was a historical figure known for his leadership and bravery qualities that the submarine aimed to embody. It was a time when the world teetered on the brink of nuclear annihilation, and the presence of such powerful submarines only heightened the tension. Today the Dmitry Donskoy is no longer in active service as a missile submarine. It has been decommissioned, but its story continues to captivate those interested in naval history and Cold War dynamics. However, its legacy lives on. The design principles and technological innovations pioneered by the Dmitry Donskoy have influenced modern submarine design. It serves as a testament to the ingenuity and ambition of Soviet submarine design, a field that pushed the boundaries of what was possible under the sea. The story of the Dmitry Donskoy is a fascinating journey through Cold War tensions, a period marked by rapid technological advancements and intense geopolitical rivalries. It highlights the incredible engineering feats achieved in the pursuit of military dominance, feats that continue to inspire and inform naval engineering to this day. The massive size of the Typhoon-class submarines with Dmitry Donskoy as their flagship was not arbitrary. These submarines were designed with a specific purpose in mind, reflecting the strategic needs and technological ambitions of the Soviet Union during the Cold War era. It was directly related to the Soviet Union's development of Intercontinental Ballistic Missiles, or ICBMs. These powerful weapons were central to the Soviet military strategy, aiming to ensure a credible deterrent against potential adversaries. These missiles, capable of reaching targets across the globe, were a game-changer in the realm of strategic warfare. Their ability to deliver nuclear warheads to distant targets made them a cornerstone of the Soviet Union's defense policy. However, they were significantly larger and heavier than their American counterparts. This size difference posed a unique set of challenges for the Soviet engineers tasked with integrating these missiles into their naval forces. Soviet engineers faced a challenge. They needed to design a submarine that could not only carry these massive ICBMs, but also ensure their effective deployment in the event of a conflict. They needed a submarine large enough to accommodate these massive ICBMs. This required innovative thinking and a departure from traditional submarine design principles. The result was the Typhoon class, a revolutionary design that pushed the boundaries of submarine technology. These submarines were unlike anything the world had seen before, both in terms of size and capability. The Typhoon class submarines were equipped with advanced technology that allowed them to operate effectively in the harsh conditions of the deep sea. 
This included sophisticated navigation systems, powerful propulsion units, and state-of-the-art communication equipment. These submarines were designed to carry up to 20 R-39 RIF, known by NATO as SSN-20 Sturgeon missiles. Each of these missiles was a formidable weapon in its own right, capable of delivering a devastating payload over long distances. The R-39 RIF missiles, or SSN-20 Sturgeon as NATO called them, were a key component of the Soviet Union's strategic arsenal. Their deployment on the Typhoon-class submarines represented a significant enhancement of the Soviet Navy's capabilities. Each missile was over 53 feet long and weighed nearly 100 tons. This immense size and weight required the submarines to be designed with special considerations to ensure they could carry and launch these missiles effectively. The sheer size of the R-39 missiles presented unique challenges. Handling and storing these massive weapons required innovative engineering solutions and meticulous planning. The submarines had to be large enough not only to carry them but also to launch them effectively. This meant designing spacious launch tubes and robust systems to handle the immense weight and recoil of the missiles during launch. The interior of the Typhoon-class submarines was a marvel of engineering. The missile storage and launch systems were designed to ensure that the missiles could be deployed quickly and efficiently, even under the most challenging conditions. Launching these massive missiles was no small feat. The submarines had to be equipped with powerful launch systems that could handle the immense forces involved in firing such large weapons. This meant designing spacious launch tubes and robust systems to handle the immense weight and recoil of the missiles during launch. The engineers had to ensure that the submarines could withstand the stresses of launching these powerful weapons without compromising their structural integrity. The launch systems were rigorously tested to ensure their reliability. The engineers conducted extensive trials to make sure that the submarines could launch their missiles accurately and effectively, even under the most demanding conditions. The Typhoon class represented a significant departure from previous Soviet submarine designs. They were significantly larger than any submarine built before, reflecting the unique requirements of carrying and launching the massive R-39 missiles. They were significantly larger than any submarine built before. This size allowed them to carry a larger payload and operate more effectively in the open ocean, providing a formidable deterrent against potential adversaries. They required innovative engineering solutions to handle the immense pressure of operating at great depths while carrying their deadly cargo. The submarines had to be designed to withstand the extreme conditions of the deep sea, ensuring their survivability and effectiveness in any situation. The development of these submarines was a testament to the determination of the Soviet Union to achieve strategic parity with the United States during the Cold War. The Typhoon-class submarines were a symbol of Soviet technological prowess and military strength, representing a significant achievement in naval engineering and strategic planning. Building a submarine as massive as the Dmitry Donskoy was an unprecedented engineering challenge. The sheer scale of the project required a level of innovation and precision that had never been attempted before. Engineers and designers had to think outside the box, pushing the boundaries of what was technically possible at the time. It required innovative solutions and a departure from traditional submarine design principles. The team had to come up with new ways to address the unique challenges posed by such a large vessel, including stability, buoyancy, and stealth. The result was a vessel that was as impressive for its size as it was for its technological sophistication. The Typhoon-class submarines were not just larger, they were smarter, incorporating the latest advancements in submarine technology. One of the most striking features of the Typhoon-class is its unique catamaran-like hull design. This design was revolutionary and set the Typhoon apart from any other submarine in existence. Instead of a single thick pressure hull, the Typhoons have two parallel pressure hulls. This dual hull design provided several advantages, including increased structural integrity and better damage control. These are connected by a central compartment. This central compartment served as the backbone of the submarine, housing critical systems and providing a pathway for crew movement. This design not only increased the submarine's buoyancy, but also provided additional protection against torpedo attacks. The dual hull structure allowed the submarine to absorb and withstand impacts that would be catastrophic to a single hull vessel. Within the central compartment, a third pressure hull housed the control room, communications center and crew quarters. This compartmentalization ensured that vital areas of the submarine were well protected and isolated from potential damage. This multi-hull design contributed to the Typhoon class's impressive survivability. 
In the event of an attack, the submarine could continue to operate even if one of its hulls was compromised. It created multiple redundant systems and compartmentalized vital components. This redundancy was crucial for maintaining operational capability under adverse conditions. Furthermore, the Typhoons incorporated a double-layered outer hull. This additional layer provided an extra line of defense against underwater threats and environmental hazards. This further enhanced their resilience to damage and reduce their acoustic signature. The quieter a submarine, the harder it is to detect, and the Typhoons were designed to be as silent as possible. This focus on stealth was paramount. The ability to operate undetected was a key strategic advantage, allowing the Typhoons to carry out their missions with minimal risk of detection. It made the submarines more difficult to detect, track, and target. This stealth capability was a game-changer in naval warfare giving the Typhoon-class submarines a significant edge over their adversaries. The sheer scale of the Typhoon-class submarines was astounding. These vessels were the largest submarines ever built, dwarfing even the largest surface ships in many navies. They were equipped with a small swimming pool, a gym, a sauna, and even a small garden to provide a semblance of normalcy for the crew during long patrols. These amenities were not just luxuries, they were essential for maintaining crew morale and mental health during extended missions. The engineering feats involved in designing and constructing these underwater giants cemented the Soviet Union's position as a leader in submarine technology. The Typhoon-class submarines remain a testament to human ingenuity and the relentless pursuit of technological advancement.